Hi, welcome to Snakes and Adders. We're continuing the introduction series on a genus that I've got a particular affinity to, and that is the North American water snakes, genus Nerodia. Now, the first snake that I ever bought, funnily enough, off Paul, who I work with now at Snakes and Adders, when I was 10 years old, was a common water snake, which is Nerodia sipidon. And it was fantastic. I loved it. Um, and back in the very early 90s, um, they were widespread and relatively common and quite widely kept. There was a range of species that were available and they were of modest size, three, four feet. And at the time, my mum, uh, obviously I was living with her, she was allergic to small mammals. So I had to be very careful about the prey that I used because I didn't want her to have an allergic reaction when, she, when I was feeding the snakes and I'd got the prey defrosting with the dander and smell everywhere. So I maintained it on lance fish and sprats and it did great. I enjoyed having that species so much that my second snake was a diamondback water snake called Nerodia rhombifer. And that is a slightly bigger species, about four feet heavy built. In very, all, all this genus have got heavily keeled scales gives them quite a rough feel and they're having a bit of a resurgence anybody who's been to the uh, reptile fairs will have seen some of the Europeans coming over and they're specialising in the rodia and the thamnophis which is the garter and ribbon snakes so they're, they're definitely a small manageable cool now quite rare species to see and the, you know there's a few to go at there's the Florida water snake which is Nerodia cyclopion there is the brown water snake, which is Nerodia taxpoloita, the diamondback, Nerodia rhombifera, the uh, common uh, water snake, which is Nerodia sipidon, and banded water snakes, Nerodia uh, fasciata. And th there are more, I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Uh, the bigger the snakes get, the more inclined they are going to be to take mammals. If you can get captive bred ones, uh, hopefully they're going to have been raised on mammals early doors. Um, they are hardy, they are day active and truly diurnal, um, they're semi arboreal like quite often in the wild they'll hang over uh, water sources on low, branching, uh, low, uh, low branches in trees so that they can bask and dry off if danger comes they can drop into the water. Naturally they would take amphibians or they would take fish um, and small crayfish and things so they are going to be maintained in a two and a half to three foot vivarium. We want them to be between 28 and 30 degrees. We want a large water container that is cleaned regularly, but the rest of the vivarium must be dry. So with a lot of water snakes, if we keep them in permanently humid and muggy environments, they actually blister and their skins don't enjoy it at all. When they want to bathe, which they will do regularly, uh, they must be able to come out and fully dry off. Uh, the old wild caught specimens that used to be available were a very mixed bag when it came to temperament and they were not always tame. Uh, I had tame ones, I, you know, I must have struck it lucky, you know, uh, Paul used to have a fair few in um, and they were a mainstay of sort of the beginner stuff that used to come through along with the American rat snakes which I got a lot of experience with through buying them off Paul. Um, so if they're captive bred, they're raised from young, they're as tame as any other snake. Uh, what I will say is if they're raised on fish, which I've got no problem with, uh, be prepared that fish smells almost identical on the way in as it does on the way out. And they can be pretty smelly, as long as you stay on top of maintenance, they're okay. Um, and yeah, they're just, just a really interesting species. And I suppose they're a parallel to what we consider to be our water snake, which is the grass snake, which is Natrix natrix. Uh, and there's other cousins, Natrix tessellata. Uh, and Natrix Mora, which are the European counterparts to them, and these are like a parallel to that. Back in the 60s and 70s, it was commonplace to go and get a grass snake, keep it, raise it for a bit, and release it again. Uh, and that was uh, many people's introduction to this hobby way back when. Um, that's not possible now. Our species in the UK are endangered, uh, and they're far better off where they are. But now that the captive breeding and the resurgence and the popularity of Nerodia is increasing, I would definitely consider them as something a bit left field, a bit different, 
we're getting into the family groups now where they're not always commonly seen but that does not necessarily mean that they can't be kept by beginners um, and their snakes perfectly suitable for beginners you know the whole purpose of these videos is actually to promote species and groups maybe away from the norm that aren't necessarily any more of a challenge for you as a keeper but just something a bit different and you know uh, variety is the spice of life uh, we've had a lot of positive feedback about the videos we're trying to be responsible with the advice we give um, if you've got uh, opinions or you want to share your experiences with a group pick one of the videos write down what you think what you keep you know let's you know get get, get some uh, some chat going and feel free to share the videos like the videos we really appreciate the support and visit the website at www.snakesandadders.co.uk to see what we're all about cheers